is will I be loved? Will I have friends? I tried to look at, I think I, I was actually talking to Earl about this the other day, and we did an interview for the Wall Street Journal, that um, I think people trivialize childhood and they underestimate the depth of um, children's feeling and perception. And I thought that my daughter um, began to express her fears about her mortality at the age of three. And it wasn't something that was uh, being addressed in the, the, the cultural products, I guess, that were prepared for children. Um, or it was, it was addressed in a way that was just so overblown that she couldn't even apply it to herself. And you see it in older fairy tales and things like this, but in the, sort of the homogenized consumer products of today, you know, that sort of screen down. I want to ask you. Or death is a cartoon violence. It's not, oh, someone has become sick and they're suffering for months and then they slowly pass away in a hospital bed. That's more adult cultural and, you know, product. <laughs> it's not generally for children, but my daughter had to experience that in real life. And, and I thought that um, it would probably be really helpful for her, as it's helpful for all of us, to find art that um, helped us through that experience. Was there any poem that you set here that you wanted to set and that you found difficult that you couldn't, you couldn't figure out initially approach, or did they simply happen? Some of them I, I wrote in several different styles of music, and then I had to decide on one. And uh, I tried doing more contemporary poetry, and outside of John Yeoman and Jack Polisky, it was really hard. The free verse was impossible for me to work with. So um, I was a little disappointed that I couldn't work with more contemporary poets, but then I also loved when I started doing the research about the poets, I loved the historical you know, anecdotes, and, and I, I liked the I loved the old photographs too. And um, I like bringing these more obscure poets from the past into the future. I love seeing the little ghosts um, that come visit. <laughs> there, there's not a poet, a poet in this room uh, who wouldn't have material for you. <laughs> We'll take the, the police escort. <laughs> We're leaving out that door. <laughs> do, do you see yourself? Uh, do you see yourself working more in in, in this genre? Hmm. I would love to do a follow-up volume, but it might kill me. <laughs> I have not even thirty musicians work on this record, and just the legal team to get all the clearances and work in the Library of Congress and the my head's about to explode when I think about it. And it took, it took years, so I don't know if I had an ending, but I would love to follow up with the volume two. I did, like, for instance, I did two Lewis Carrolls. I did four Edward Lears. I did four Walter de la Mars. And I did things like counting songs and songs to read, poems to remember the days of the week and the months. I mean, I have this probably with the same amount um, unrecorded. But I don't know if I have this yeah, wherewithal to, to do this project again. <laughs> well, when you talk about the difficulty of setting free verse mm -hmm. to music, um, this group of uh, poets uh, writes in traditional form, in, uh, uh, using prosody, <coughs> the kinds of things you were talking about. Uh, I think it would be a great idea do volume two using more contemporary mm. contemporary poetry. Now having said that, we are going to have to leave that. <laughs> <laughs>
of a poem by Wilfred Owen that was put to music. Um, and I just thought that was kind of a precursor. I mean, was that your choice? No, that was the guitar place, yes. Okay. All right. And the other. But he introduced me to World War One poetry through Dina. And he said he was a teacher. He was an English teacher. Oh, I didn't he know was, that. He was, uh, yeah. And he was 13 years older than me. So when we made that first record, I was only 17. Yeah, I, re I do remember reading that. And what about the song Hey Jack Kerouac? I mean, that's one of the most classic songs. I mean, were you reading the piece? Yeah, definitely. You know, the It was really embarrassing when I had the chance to become friends with Alan Ginsberg. Because there's a line that says, Adam, baby, why well, so jaded that the boys all grown up and their beauty faded? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So jaded hardly, Natalie. <laughs> Favorite of all the window line by Charles Edward Carroll. 